So this is Lily, my Hello. sister-in-law's partner, and she is a food scientist. Mm -hmm. And last time I visited, she told me that she had access to some fresh ground wheat. Yeah, I belong to a co-op in Corvallis, Oregon that has a lovely bulk section, including a mill your own wheat section. And since she was coming up, she decided to buy some, mm -hmm. and I'll insert some footage that she took for me of that. Mm -hmm. And we took my all-purpose flour and her freshly ground wheat flour, and we decided to make a loaf of bread out of each and see what happened. Absolutely. The all-purpose wheat first is that then we work out what kinks on the bad one. You know what? You're right. That is what we should do. <laughs> so all-purpose first. Okay. Though so there should be enough for two loaves. Yeah. In case you screw up one. Yeah. So let's let's. I agree with you. Let's work out the kinks first. <laughs> we got some yeast. Got some yeast. We got some yeast. Yeah, we got some yeast. Now I'm doing 325 grams of all purpose flour. 325! 325! Now 100, gra 100 grams of water. 5 grams of salt and 50 grams of sugar. I'm a scientist. Stir to combine, and we will be adding another 30 milliliters of warm water, stirring to create a pancake batter-like paste, and then adding the remaining flour and stirring until forming a shaggy dough. 300 milliliters of water. Pancake like batter, here we go. Okay, ow. Are you good at kneading? Probably. I would not call myself good at kneading. Can you teach me your technique? I knead in the same way that I knead clay, which is probably bad. There are probably different techniques, but I did a lot of ceramics, so that's what I got in my brain. And I feel like the like purpose is different, right? In clay, you're trying to get all the air bubbles out, because if there's any air bubbles, it explodes. Mm-hmm. But like in bread, you don't want to get all the air bubbles out, but I don't know. So when this becomes inevitably sticky because it's absorbed all the flour on the counter, I can reflour the surface underneath it. Nice. When you do this in clay, it's called the ram's head wedge. <laughs> can I try to do it with your strategy? Sure. So it's like this. Nope. Yes. Nope. This. And then this. Is that what you were doing? No, yeah, it's all in that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Oh, okay. I was doing it backwards. I feel like this is what they do in their British baking show, but it wasn't what you were doing. Sure. That's learning through observation of people who know more about bread than I do. In the anatomy of a wheat berry or a wheat seed or a wheat kernel, there are three main components. There is the bran, which is the exterior. There's the endosperm, which is the starchy inner part um, that provides nourishment to the germ or the embryo. When the germ germinates, uh, it takes the starch from the endosperm and uses that to fuel the new plant in its development. Is there any reason that you have to do this in a loaf pan and we're not going to bake the two breads like side by side on the cookie sheets? Hmm, that's a good question. I guess because in the recipe, they were trying to make like explicitly sandwich bread. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's a reason. I suggest. For science. For maximum comparison, we split both loaf doughs in half. Okay. We do one half of the all purpose loaf and one half of the fresh loaf in the loaf pan, and one half of the fresh loaf and one half of the all purpose loaf on a cookie sheet. So when you say in the loaf pan, you mean like side by side? Side in by same side. Loaf pan. Same environment same baking temp and then you get a split like one half one kind one half the other kind for maximum comparison uh, it's so sciencey i could only expect it from someone with a phd mm -hmm. all right now i need the fancy wheat, wheat please 
325 grams of the freshly ground wheat. So I did look it up and with wheat, the weight is the same. Like you, if you're measuring volumetrically with the, just the cups, then you have to like one and a half times the recipe. Mm. But since we're doing weight, we're good. So what's the difference between flour and freshly ground wheat? I'm not 100% sure. When you harvest wheat for, for example, all-purpose flour, what they do is they take a combine or a sickle or something through the field. Um, they chop off the head of the wheat, and then you get this wheat head that has a bunch of wheat berries and um, like structures to hold it on the plant. Um, you separate that out. The things that hold the berries to the plant is the chaff. You remove that, and then you have your wheat berries. And then to make all-purpose white flour, you remove the exterior, the bran, and you remove the germ, and you're just left with the endosperm that you then mill and process and bleach. And I'm gonna guess with whole wheat, they leave the outside on, and that's the hull. Correct. And that's what gives it the like brown color. And the reason that we use all-purpose flour for the most part instead of whole wheat flour in baking is that whole wheat flour has more fats in it and more enzymes in it, and it's more likely to go rancid. Mm. So all-purpose flour has much longer shelf life, which is the same thing for white rice instead of brown rice. So interesting. Yeah. Whoa, that does feel really weird. Yeah, it's like sandy. Whoa. Like the the it's like the coolness too. There's like clearly a lot of moisture in it. So like this is all purpose. This is the freshly ground stuff. It's so different. For science, you should probably be doing the kneading for consistency sake. <laughs> Technician error. Oh, looks oh great. God. That looks amazing, Lily. Oh my Bread. god. Bread. Let's butter both of these and put parchment paper on top. Yes, that's what it wants. Like a baby. Ooh, oh, oh, this is the wheat with the freshly ground wheat. This is the all-purpose. Punch, punch. Ooh, oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> that one didn't punch nearly as much. Ooh, it's chilly still. Uh, that's well. okay. Mm. All right, 500 grams of each will probably be good. Interesting. Very different texture. Oh, it looks like magic sand. That makes sense. So the bread's burned. Oh no, that's 400. As prescribed. As recipe said. I don't know to, how to react. I kind of want to cry. I mean, there's more wheat. I know, but we <laughs> spent a lot of time on it today. Yeah. Live and learn. But it's what did we do? Like, I can't learn if I don't know what happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It sure looks like the butter lit on fire. Yeah. You think you can cut the top off? That's what I'm gonna try. It's only been in there for like five minutes, right? Yeah, literally five minutes. So if the fire is like isolated to the top of it, maybe the yeast on the bottom's fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm worried that it's the parchment paper somehow. This parchment paper is covered in butter. I think it's aired out enough out there actually that we can just do this as well. The rise is beautiful. The rise is absolutely good. I still think this might be good bread. This is definitely going. Look at the nice bubblage on top! So oven 325, you think? Let's do oven 325 first. Let's, let's do 320. Yeah. For 30 minutes, maybe. Yeah. Feature not available? <laughs> Can I wait? Is it because I can smell the smoke? Yeah, well, maybe. maybe yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, maybe probably. you gotta air it we out. Probably a bit. Have to air this out. Press it again, though. That's how it lands. It's probably a safety mechanism. 
Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well let's give it some time. Well, <sighs> progress isn't linear, Shayna. <laughs> wow. Like new. It looks like a brain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is this ready yet? No, I just tried it. It is preheating to 315 because I turned off the breaker in the electrical box and then waited a minute and then turned it back on. And now it works. Also, apparently it's 12 on AM. <laughs> So it's the next morning. We were up very late last night <laughs> trying to fix the bread. So I guess we're gonna taste it because I think these are the most aesthetic Instagram worthy <laughs> clothes I've ever seen. <laughs> Regardless of the burning disaster, it's interesting that the fresh wheat grind didn't rise as much as the all-purpose grind. Yes. Maybe they needed a different proofing times, but it, they look on the surface like they're gonna have very different crumbs. I agree, yeah. This one looks much fluffier, and then this one looks fairly crumbly. Yeah. I am wondering if it's like, oh, did we need them very differently or something? Yeah. Like, did one get needed more than the other? Or like, my little theory, that maybe the yeast eats the all-purpose flour easier than the yeah. fresh ground wheat. Who knows? Anyway, should I slice into this? Yeah. Oh my god. It's a terrible crust. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. That is. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's not risen. Oh much no at all. no no no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say cooked, but not risen. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty bad. <sighs> We're still eating this though, right? Yeah. Oh, it this reminds is rock me hard. of like a dense rye or like a yeah. banana bread. But hey, we got nice quality butter and we got delicious sea salt. <laughs> Homemade. Let's sea put salt. some lipstick on this pig. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so the texture sucks. Mm hmm. It does remind me of like a rye loaf. If this was served to me at a fancy restaurant, I would think it was intentional. Okay. I like the flavor. It is a very whole wheaty flavor. Mm -hmm. It's got like a bit of a molasses-y flavor. It's got a like a nice sweetness and like more of a depth of flavor than I would assume with an all-purpose flour. The fla yeah, the flavor is very nice. I can't stand the texture. That's fair. <laughs> Let's compare it to the all-purpose, which did rise much better and it was more risen after approves, I feel like. Yes. I do like how there's the like underapproved area. It's like rings of a tree, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where you can see what has happened to this bread. Yeah, this bread has a story to tell. Yes, <laughs> it has a life, it has a history. This yeast salt's really good. Thank you. The texture is better in this one, which mm -hmm. is wild because the same thing happened to both. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can see all purpose is just has it's less weight to deal with. Yeah. So it's easier to bounce back? Yeah. I would totally buy that. It's still not a good texture, I want to point out. It's just better. And this is from a recipe that's kind of designed to be a sandwich bread. It tastes like a sandwich bread. That's fair. Well, I'm going to eat all of it. So <laughs> my standards aren't that high. This is lovely fresh baked bread. I just had a taste of the less crusty piece of the whole wheat loaf. It, I do like it more without the very chompy chomp caramelized cr crust, yeah. yeah. I like the depth of flavor, and I like the fluffiness, so I think they're both winners. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making this happen and bringing the ground wheat and everything. I really appreciate it. It was easy peasy. I am just like eating it, I'm like, oh man, even bad bread tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> What's wild is like, I'm gonna be thinking about this for days until I can do the redo. And I'm gonna edit all that out, or I'm not even gonna film it. So like everyone watching this, it's just, it's gonna happen right now. Unless our fresh flour goes rancid in the meantime. Why would you say that? <laughs>
Hello. I believe the last time you saw me, I would have been with Lily, having just tasted the burned bread that you like managed to recook. Yeah. Uh, and that was like two weeks ago. By all accounts, this flour should have gone bad, but it didn't smell like it had, so I'm using it. I used it, past tense. I didn't know that part. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been in the fridge for two weeks. It smelled fine. I just, I'm saying that for posterity, in case we taste it, it tastes horrible. This one will taste good, since it's the all-purpose flour. Yeah. This one, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, wow, this is pillowy. Oh my. So it does look a little dense. Um, it's a big loaf of bread. Oh yeah, that slices through. Oh. So I feel like I should mention the original recipe calls for butter, and we used butter last time. But if you'll recall last time, we also ended up with burned bread. So this time I use olive oil. L'chaim. L'chaim. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. It's so much lighter than mm -hmm. the burned stuff. Oh yeah. Let's see how this one turned out. Here is the whole wheat, and here is the all-purpose. So the crumb texture on the whole wheat one is definitely denser, and here is the difference in like how much they rose. One went out more. Yeah, this one seemed to spread out more. But you could make the argument that that probably has more to do with my lack of skill as a baker. One thing that was super interesting is when I was kneading the wheat dough, which last time Lily uh, mm -hmm. did the kneading for the wheat dough, she did describe it as like kinetic sand. Oh, oh my goodness. It, it felt like I was at the beach. Wow. Lachayim. Lachayim and cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, it's so much better. Mmm. It actually feels like it's a relatively similar crumb density to the other one. Only a little denser. It didn't spoil. Yeah. Huzzah. <laughs> How would it have spoiled? Mm. The oil in it would have gone bad. Mm. I want some honey. Ooh, I have honey. Yeah. I got this at a farmer's market. Uh, beautiful. So shockingly, uh, honey and whole wheat go great together. So overall, I think we have two delicious breads. Absolutely. Final thoughts. You smashed it. <laughs> That's not, I mean, thank you. It doesn't need any more nuance than that. I meant like eating different breads, com compare, contrast. Yeah. So obviously in the pro con for the all-purpose flour, I was never worried that it was going to go bad. That just lives in an airtight container in my pantry. The freshly milled wheat flour was in my fridge, which is a limited space resource. I would say pro to the wheat flour is it has a more complex flavor and a more complex texture. It's a bit more nuanced. Yeah. So I think that would serve it really well for things like a cheese board. It's sturdy, so like a pizza dough, you know? Yeah, like I it's, mean, yeah, this would make an absolutely fantastic like toast base as well. If you were in like thick slices. Avocado toast. For, like, avocado toast, some sort of like, you know, the base of some sort of like. Open face sandwich, like um, cream cheese and lox. Oh my gosh, this would be so good yeah. with cream cheese and lox. So then obviously the pro of the white bread is it can really technically be applied to anything and it won't like fight with other flavors, if that makes sense. I have a soft spot in my heart for like very straightforward, simple flavors. And this definitely hits that. It's really nice. Thank you. It's really nice. Like, I think this is great. It's an event loaf. Yes. Because you can't always have fresh milled wheat in mm. your fridge. Yeah. The internet says it should only last one week at most. Maybe it could be even better if, yeah. you know, if we hadn't burned the first loaf. This pairs with things. This complements lots of things. Yes. Does that make sense? This yeah. can go underneath anything. This is a blank slate. Yeah. This is going to add to whatever it gets paired with. Both are great. Both are great. Both have different purposes. I think that's what we've learned. Yeah. Diversity is the spice of bread. I like that. Thank you for taste testing. Thank you for having me. Uh, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe. Oh my gosh, I'm copying Smoky Glow. Well, you were just watching a bunch of her videos. It's true. Um, I think that's all for now. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.
If there's other flour that you think I should experiment with, please leave a comment down below. What? Not these, these are not edible. <laughs> we have all three types of flours uh, represented here. We have all-purpose flour, we have freshly milled whole wheat flour, and carnations. <laughs> oh, there's Lego flowers in the back. Oh, and there's Lego flowers.